on that one. I want to try to find out potentially either in the auto logic or in the homing what occurred to get this fault. So trade in Esther 2, auto operations. So again, this is like all the, the auto, like this is like the auto sequencing. So it'll take you like step through, step by step through like the different processes that, that occur within this. So tray conveyor auto cycling seed from the tag name. Okay, so we got, we have a five in this data point right here. So this tells me that we've gotten to the, the, the rung of logic where we've moved a five. Come down to here, here's where we move a five. So we were on step number four whenever we move this five in here. So I can tell you right now, this this particular rung of logic is literally just a step. So it, it probably doesn't have any functionality other than it creates an in-between step between the actual steps. So as you can see, like this is a very simple rung of logic, and then you come to the next rung of logic, and here's where we're, here's where we're now actually uh, doing something. So this rung here probably just never went true. So we have it equal to five right here. So this would be true. So the only thing that's in our way is this servo ready record table call. So if I'm not mistaken, a record table call is where I believe it calls it to its next position. Because this, this like record table call is one of the bits that like jumps around to different parts of the logic. At least not in this logic. It, this could be where the other bit is being used that we was just looking at. So that, that 10 that was there, that 10 is probably being passed to the servo. Go to cross-reference. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to that table counter. Go ahead and cross-reference it real quick. Okay, so here's where we're taking that table counter and we're moving it to another piece of data. So like whenever I came and I did that cross-reference, I can tell from this cross-reference right here that it's not directly talking to the servo. Why is it not directly talking to the servo? Because it doesn't give me a cross reference here that's calling out that AOI of the of the of the servo. So, but we're doing a move here where we're taking that same 10 data or that, that table counter value and we're moving it to target value. So I, I would assume if I keep following tracing this down, it's gonna eventually run into Okay, so here, here we're moving it again to another destination. So now we've taken that 10, we took it, we moved it, and then now we're moving it again. If not, then you may not receive the 10 before you do all these other moves, which will cause a, cause a conflict. And there we go. We traced it back down to now, now it's sending it directly to the drive. You can click into it again. So here you are, we have the AOI of the drive. So here's where you're finally passing position 10. Okay, so it looks like we got all the way to sending that position 10 to the drive. And then it, it probably executed and then, and then faulted out. It probably got to position. It did, yep. And then it, it, fault, it basically said, I'm out of, I'm out of position. So I'm not like intolerance of what I should be. Okay, so let me tell you why why this one here is true, okay? If you look at this limit value right here, this is between 200 and negative 200, which we're talking, uh -huh. about, we're talking about microns uh, of a number. Yeah, very small. Okay, we're shoving it a one. So this is our position number one. Okay? This should be zero, right? Yep. That's why it's between negative 200 and 200, okay? Which means this is, should be where we home and where we master at. Which confirms to me that this is the slat that is zero. So what happens is we tell it to go back to 10 again So we tell it basically, you're at one, okay, you can call it true, and then we, 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 we do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and instead of telling it to go back to one again, 
if we told it to go back to one again, the conveyor would probably try to run a reverse to go back to one. So what we're doing oh, is yeah, yeah. tell it to go to ten, which should be the equivalent, and then we're going to take that data and we're going to reset it. Technically, you probably never go to position one. You just say go to position ten, and then you reset that data to zero, and then you're just automatically at position one. Or the alternative to that is position one is only used whenever rehoming the conveyor, when remastering the conveyor. So if you remaster the conveyor, let's say for instance, the zero position is the flag of like the second sensor, which th we, for this, we have to go look in the homing logic real quick. Oh, task started. Start delay. So between negative a thousand and a thousand. Latch homing se sequence complete. And unlatch. <clears throat> Home start PB and mastering start. Yeah, so you see here when we're starting this, most of this stuff, if you look, td2.csa.whatever. So the reason why these are all the same is because these are all these are all tag names associated with signals directly from the drive. So this axis enabled, this axis error. Uh, the, I don't think this is the direct tag name, but if we trace this back, it'll it'll link directly to the servo drive. to that same AOI right here. To this one here. So if you look here, there's like uh, oh, over here to the side. So axis enabled, axis position okay, axis speed fixed, uh, axis reference position, axis error, lockout, error, So this is kind of just a way to be able to see what what are some of the uh, direct outputs that are associated with the servo. And th this is just important to know because these are the signals that are coming directly from the servo. So if it's coming directly from the servo, you can say, okay, it's not something on the PLC side. It's something that's definitively coming from the servo. So then you have to go to like the servo software and look inside the servo to see why the error is coming. So we have a mode six right now. So like what could happen on the PLC side to potentially cause this would be maybe you, maybe you told it to go to a position and then you commanded it to go to that position too soon. Like there's some things that are like send the value and then wait 200 milliseconds and then send the go command and so like if that doesn't happen then that calls a conflict or let's say for instance if i told it to go to a position and told it to go to another position too quickly uh before i had time to be ready again those are those are like plc side conditions that could occur uh, to, to cause like a fault like that outside of that it, it's going to be something internal to the servo itself maybe it's going to be a you know it could be a speed thing where it, it is trying to go somewhere too quickly and it falls out due to like a, a speed command issue. Uh, could be that it goes to that position and then it falls out because it's not in the position that it thinks it should be in. And then, and then you know, that could have like multiple scenarios to it. Maybe the conveyor is decelerating too quickly. And so maybe, it, so maybe either it's over traveling, like same thing you're seeing with X axis, right? Like either it's over traveling or it's uh, stopping too quickly, causing, like, let's say, a resistor fault. So those are kind of just a couple things that could be there.
I'm just kind of reading through all the logic that's associated, just scanning through real quick. Again, in this condition right here, you could put it into home mode and home it, right? Yeah, okay, so this is the actual homing, like in home mode. So here's where you're moving fast to the first flag. Yep. You're gonna hit the first flag, and then it's gonna tell you, it's gonna move the data basically to change the speed. So here we're changing the speed of the servo drive. And then you go to the next rung of logic where you So now we're giving the signal jog slow. These right here though are probably just an internal DLC thing. Letting it know like we're jogging slow now. So here yeah. we're at the second sensor. Mastering start. So here's where mastering will start the zeroing process. Move it 30. Tray buffer retract. Buffer guide retract. I don't know why it's asking me. Retract, retract, retract. Now this right here is probably a confirmation back from the VFD. Or the servo, I should say. So now we've moved to 35 into here, and it's equal to 35 here. And so now we're just waiting for the servo to say I'm done. After the servo says I'm done, move the zero into here. It looks like after doing the homing, basically re-zeroes everything. It basically does like an abort of all the things.